Let's check out Egypt Air's non-stop service from Washington, D.C. in the United States to Cairo. Hey everybody, it's Gus with Egypt Adventures Travel. I create custom itineraries for trips to Egypt, connect travelers with vetted and trusted local Egyptian guides and companies, and I also lead group tours and private tours myself. You can go to my website, egyptadventurestravel.com, to fill out an interest form and tell me about your Egypt adventure. I'm here at Dulles International Airport in Washington, D.C. to take one of three different options for non-stop flights from the United States over to Cairo. All of these non-stop flights are on Egypt Air, Egypt's flagship carrier, and aside from Dulles International Airport in Washington, D.C., travelers from the U.S. can also fly non-stop from JFK Airport and also Newark Airport. There are rumors about a flight that's gonna be opening up out of LAX, which would be really great for those travelers coming from the West Coast. But for now, those three East Coast airports are your options to fly without any layovers from the U.S. to Egypt. Here's what the check-in looked like. Basically, no line. Wow, that was probably one of the easiest check-ins I have ever experienced. Um, it probably took about 10 minutes. There were about nine ticket windows open, and even with a checked bag, I only had to wait in line for a couple minutes. I planned on arriving to the airport three hours before my flight scheduled departure, so my flight was leaving at noon, and I got to the airport a little bit after nine. So maybe I beat the rush, I don't know, but it's always a good idea to get to the airport, especially if it's one you're not familiar with, um, three hours before for international departures. Minimum, minimum two hours before, but I usually try to do three. And for my flight over to Cairo, I decided to check one large bag. My baggage allowance is I could check up to two bags, each bag up to 50 pounds. I just have one with me, but just good to know. You can always check the baggage allowance. It should be right on your ticket when you book or even on the website before you book your tickets. I arrived to the airport at 9.05 and it's now about 9.45. So within 40 minutes, I got to the airport, I checked in, checked a bag, got through security, and now I'm already at the gate area. So this has been a really, really easy and very hassle-free experience so far. So here's to hoping the flight itself will also be really easy and arrival at Cairo International Airport will be smooth too. So why should travelers opt to fly Egypt Air instead of flying another carrier over to Cairo? Well, for me, for this particular trip, cost was the biggest factor that made me decide to choose Egypt Air. My one-way flight over to Cairo was only $511, which was about half the cost of getting a one-way out of my home airport of Minneapolis and St. Paul. I only needed a one-way flight for this particular trip, so that's why I decided to go over to Dulles Airport, got a really cheap flight out of Minneapolis to Washington, D.C., got to D.C. one night early, stayed with a friend that I hadn't seen in a few years, so I got to catch up with a friend friend and get a really affordable flight option over to Cairo. And the cherry on top is it's only a 10 and a half hour flight, no layover necessary. So quick flight over to DC, 10 and a half hour flight, and then I land the next morning in Cairo. But every Egypt trip is different. So travelers need to think about budget. They need to think about timing. They need to think about what their home airport is. Maybe a traveler from the US lives in Fairfax, Virginia, and then Dulles Airport is right next to their house, so it's really easy for them to take a nonstop flight. But maybe for a traveler from Chicago, it doesn't make sense to have to fly all the way over to the East Coast in order to get that flight over to Cairo. It's much better to just take a nonstop flight from Chicago to Doha on Qatar Airways, for example, and then fly to Cairo after that. So people just have to think about what their trip is, the scheduling, cost, and all of those factors. But for this particular trip, I'm really glad I booked this Egypt Air flight. They're boarding in zones. I was zone D, so I had to wait toward the end to get on the plane, but now we're boarding. It's about 20 minutes before departure, and I will show you what it looks like on the plane when I get inside. I had to take a cheesy picture with the plane in the background. So here is what the inside of the plane looked like. I was sitting in the economy section, which you can see in front of me. Boarding went really smoothly and we had an on-time departure with this really fun safety video from Egypt Air showing different places that people are going to see when they come to Egypt, like the National Museum of Egyptian Civilization, talking about no smoking and how to put on your seatbelt. I thought the security video and the safety video was super, super fun. So once that finished, we took off 
and from here I'll talk about what my experience was like in the flight. I'm not somebody who watches movies on a plane, but there were lots of options for films, English language films, Arabic language films, so in-flight entertainment, they had it covered, there also was a USB port to plug in devices, and there was also an internet package available for purchase. There was an internet package that was free that was just enough to send a few text messages, but if you wanted to pay, you could purchase a certain amount of megabytes to have access to the internet. Soon after takeoff, we got these cute little care packages that included a reusable pouch with a bunch of toiletries and things to help us get to sleep. And then it was time for the crew to serve dinner. It wasn't my favorite meal that I've had on a plane, but it got the job done. Something to note though is that Egypt Air is a dry airline, meaning they do not serve any alcohol. So they're just serving soft drinks, juice, water, and meals. After several hours, they served a hot breakfast as well. And then they handed out forms that you get on any flight to Egypt to fill out to give to border security and customs immigration folks. And then after that, we were landing at Cairo International Airport. So the flight was uneventful. I slept through most of it except for meal times. I felt like it was very comfortable. Ten and a half hours, it was so nice to be to Cairo in such a short amount of time without a layover. And so now here I am at Cairo International Airport. Egypt Air arrives to Terminal 3. So this is the terminal that you're seeing right here. We are all heading to Passport Border Control, Customs Immigration, Baggage Claim. So I purchase my visa upon arrival every time I come into Egypt. Here are the bank counters where I did that. As you can see, there's virtually no line. Super easy, way easier than getting it online. And here is the line that everybody had to wait in whether you bought a visa online or whether you bought your visa upon arrival like me. Again, pretty short line. I think it took me only about 15 minutes to get through it. And then the longest part of the time was waiting for my bags at baggage claim. But there's cell phone providers in the baggage claim area at Terminal 3. So you can get a local SIM card while you wait for your baggage. And then after that, I was out of the airport getting a taxi heading to my accommodation. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video talking about Egypt Air's nonstop flight from Washington, D.C. over to Cairo. If you give it a try, let me know what you think in the comments. I'm Gus with Egypt Adventures Travel. Thanks for watching.